Okay, so we have our uh, template open here. So we went to File, Open Sample Programs, went to Project Lead the Way PLTW folder, we opened the PLTW template. You might have a different template. We also, of course, as soon as we open our template, we go File, Save As, and we saved our file. Okay, so here we are at a blank, kind of a blank robot C um, page of code. So the very first thing that we have to get on this page is our pragma statements. So right now, Robot C doesn't know what's plugged into our cortex, so we have to tell it. And we do that by doing our robot, our motors and sensor setup. Now, I'm going to go over three ways to get those pragma statements into your assignment. First, we're going to do the expert way. Okay, I would never go into motors and sensor setup. I would do it one time. Okay, so here's an example. Notice that I switched up at the top here. I switched to another tab. I would have another file I already worked on, and I would select. Notice how I have to select this entire line all the way from uh, code automatically generated all the way up to the top line of the pragma statements. I would copy that, and in my new file, I'd go to line one and paste it in. Okay. And by doing that, I would get all the pragma statements. That way I didn't have to go in and have to do motors and sensor setup every time. I just can copy it just like it's code, because it is just code, and paste it right into my new file. Okay, but let's say I didn't know how to do that. Okay. Now I'm working on the GTD test bed in this case, so there is an easy way to do it. Okay, so we go to robot, uh, motors and sensor setup. I can go to standard model the standard model tab of motors and sensor setup, I can click GTT testbed and I can click OK and that will get me this one pragma statement right here uh, that says standard model GTT testbed. Okay, and if I notice, if I double click the pragma statement, it opens up motors and sensor setup. Notice that essentially it's filled in on all the other tabs the correct uh, entries for the GTT testbed. Okay, now that's kind of the beginner way to do it. All right, so we went kind of expert, we've gone beginner. The third way is kind of the most straightforward and utilitarian way, okay? So let's say I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a, there was a standard model, okay? I would basically go look at, so how I would do this if I just wanted to do it as quickly as possible and get the pragma statements I needed, I would go ahead and look at my assignment. So let's say my assignment is this quick robot C exercise. It says create a program that runs a motor for five seconds at half speed and download it to the robot. Okay, so I know that really all I need is a is a motor. Okay, even though I have other things plugged into the cortex for this exercise, all I need is the motor. Okay, so I could go to robot, motors and sensor setup, go to the motors tab. I look down at my cortex. I see oh hey, there's a motor plugged in for port one and port ten. Of course, on your cortex it might be different depending on where you plugged your motors in. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, now, when you're building the robot, it will matter. You want to be well organized and stuff. But, but for our purposes, because this is practice, wherever the motors are plugged in is fine. So, I'm going to go and name, I'm going to go ahead and name port one right motor. I'm going to call. You know, it's. I looked on the back of it. It's a Vex 393 motor. And then in port 10, I'm going to name that left motor. And I'm going to call that Vex 393 motor. Okay. All right, so there we have it. So I click OK. So I know that, hey, I could put in all the all the stuff um, that's been plugged into my Cortex, but I know that for this exercise, I just need a motor. In fact, I really only need one motor. I could have, I didn't even have to do both motors. Okay, so those are your three options. You can copy and paste the pragma statements. You can use a standard setup like the GTT testbed, or you can just put in the pragma statements that you need for your assignment. Okay. All right, guys, so we got our pragma statement done. Now let's go ahead to project title. So this project title, we're going to call this quick exercise. Okay, and remember, you should be kind of working along with me here. So quick exercise, my team member. Unfortunately, it's just me. I wish I had a team like you. You could put comma. Since it's me, myself, and I, I'm going to put a comma. Okay, for date, I'm going to put... 10, 16 per section. This is the last period of the day for me, so it's period six. Uh, and then, so okay, so we get down to task task description. 
Okay, now I know you guys right now, you can't copy and paste this. When you get, actually get the assignments, you'll be able to just copy and paste it. So it says, exercise one. Create a program that runs a motor for five seconds at half speed and download it to the robot. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Why write it again? Okay, this is not English class, right? This is essentially computer science. We're just trying to get it done and correct counts. Okay, we don't mind how it gets done in computer science. All right. So... As long as it's done and it's correct, it's done. Um, now, of course, you can't steal other people's stuff, but um, you can stand on the shoulders of giants if possible. All right, so okay, so create a program that runs a motor for five seconds at half speed and download it to the robot. So that's our task description. Okay, so let's take a minute, and you guys are going to type that out. Create a program that runs a motor for five seconds at half speed and download it to the robot. Okay, if you're working along with me, just go ahead and pause there. I'll leave this up later. You guys have read it. You can type it in, you know, in just a few minutes when you work on your own. So now it is time for pseudocode. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write our pseudocode. So we read the task description. Remember, basically in our pseudocode, we can do things like turn on a motor. We can wait. We can read a sensor input. We can use an if statement in our pseudocode even. Okay, but we don't know how to do any of that yet. So for now, we're just going to start motors, wait, or stop motor. Okay, so what are we going to do? Create a program that runs a motor for five seconds at half speed. So we're going to start start motor at half speed. Okay, wait five seconds. Okay, and guys, you'll notice that if this stuff pops up, see that that's that down box right there? That's really, really valuable. Okay, so say that's called IntelliSense is the name Microsoft gives it, but it's basically code completion. So basically, if you see that pop up, what you can do is you can uh, uh, arrow down to whatever command you want and hit enter, and it will type it in automatically. Okay, you can also hit tab. Let's see how it works here. I'm going to... So you can arrow down, you can tab, yeah, use tab for code complete, that'll work. Okay. All right, so start motor at half speed, wait five seconds, and then we're going to put stop uh, motor, and that will be the end of our uh, pseudocode. Okay, so we have our pseudocode written, so notice we're going to go back, so create a program that runs a motor for five seconds at half speed and download it to the robot. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and copy our pseudocode, so control C. And now we're going to go down to where it's actually going to be run in the program. Okay, so we're going to use our pseudocode as the comments for our program just to start out. Now, is it necessary, I always get a question from students, is it necessary if I change my program, if my pseudocode wasn't quite right, do I need to go back and correct my pseudocode? When you're writing simpler programs, you don't need to do that. The pseudocode is kind of your planning and jumping off point. Um, as you, if you wrote more complex code, you might you need you need more robust, you know, more complicated planning tools. So you might want to go update your pseudocode. You might need to have diagrams or other things that kind of plot out like a map for your code. Uh, so basically, it's whatever is necessary or whatever is required for your project. So if you if you work in an organization, they might require you to have pseudocode written, or they might require you to, to have diagrams written. Okay. Um, in general, you want to kind of self-document your code, but um, documentation of code is a whole science in and of itself. Um, so for now, let's just use our pseudocode as a jumping-off point. Um, there's actually, when I say a science in and of itself, there's actually automated documentation software that's used um, by most um, modern programming languages. So um, for now, we write our own pseudocode. We're going to use it as our, um, our comments for our, for our code. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and do control C on our pseudocode. We're going to go inside of our curly braces on task main. So we're here at task main. We're at the, you know, we find our opening curly brace, our closing curly brace for task main. And we're just going to paste that inside. And then we're going to comment it out. So we're going to do two forward slashes in front of start, two forward slashes in front of wait, and two forward slashes in front of stop motor. 
I like to imagine, how do you know if it's a forward slash or backslash? Well, if you were if you were the slash and you were leaning forward, you would be a forward slash. If you were a slash and you were leaning backwards, you would be a backslash. Okay? That's how you remember. All right. So we have our comments inside of task main. We have our pseudocode written. We have our, them represented as comments inside of task main. Notice that it's a task called main. Uh, these parentheses have to be there. That's where we would pass parameters into our task called main. Um, we don't have any parameters, so there's nothing inside. We still have to have the parentheses, though. We have our the opening curly brace and our closing curly brace. That defines what is in task main. Okay, don't mess with the opening and closing curly brace. Okay, that's a very like, just leave them be. Okay, don't edit them. You're only really programming in between there for now. All right. Okay, so now let's take a look at our function library. So there on our left. Now, if you don't see natural language here, it means that your platform is not set correctly. Okay, so you need to go to robot, platform type, innovation first, natural language, VEX Cortex. Okay, if I switch this to say VEX 2.0, notice that the function library becomes blank until I go to robot and compile program. Okay, then I get the wrong ones. I don't have natural language here that we're using. Uh, so I have to go to robot, platform type, innovation first, natural language, VEX Cortex. And then I have to notice that that blanks out my function library. And to get the function library back, I have to actually go to robot compile program. Okay, so you should be able to see natural language here is what we're looking for on the left. If you don't have it, set your, set your platform type. Okay, so now we're ready to start dragging things over. And notice, I mean, I've used this for quite a while. I could probably just type this stuff out. Uh, dragging your commands over gets you a lot of different stuff. It eliminates the possibility of misspellings. It eliminates the possibility of, of forgetting uh, semicolons at the end. It also documents, your, it has a lot of documentation here. So if I go ahead and I just mouse over start motor, notice it gives me everything I need to know. So it says start a motor, motor at a specific speed. Uh, range negative 127 to 127, acceptable motor or ports 1 through 10, and your names for them given in motors and sensor setups. So that's what we're going to use. So notice that if I want to replace this, so, so I'm calling a function called start motor. That function takes two parameters, motor port and speed. Okay, so motor port, I can just go ahead and put in the name for my motor. So in this case, write motor. Notice that it, um, it highlights red. So it, it's uh, so I know I typed it right. For speed, I want to start at half speed. So I noticed that when I, if I had a mouse over start motor, it said negative 127 to 127. So half of 127 is 63.5. Is You're not going to notice the 0.5. So just put in 63 or 64. I'm going to go with 64. OK. So now we're going to go ahead and wait five seconds. So we're going to open up. I'm going to go to my function library. I'm going to open up wait. Open up natural language, open up wait. And notice that I have two weights, wait in milliseconds or wait time. So I'm just going to go for wait weights or wait time. OK. And notice that it's wait time. Wait time is in seconds. So I just double click that word to highlight it. I change that to an integer 5. So notice that the 5 here. Now, sometimes in programming languages, you'd use like uh, parentheses and stuff inside here. But you don't in robot C. Okay, so these the right motor is, is considered a variable name. You don't use parentheses around that. And any number you pass in is just an integer. So it's just a number. All right. Maybe well, I'm sorry, it's not an integer because I can put it, I can put in decimal decimal points here, but I'm getting off the subject. So it's it's just a number or just a variable name. Okay. All right, so finally we're gonna stop motor. So we're gonna pull over stop motor. Okay, notice it takes double point. Now watch watch the quick way to do this. I could type in right motor, but that would take a long time. Okay, so I can double click right motor up here, control C to copy, double click motor port, control V to paste, and I can move text around like that. So by double clicking with control C and control V, that's the quickest way to move move words around on the screen. Remember, this is computer science, not English class. Okay. All right, though we love English class. Not casting dispersions on other on other areas of study. You can do a lot of things with English. You can write down lunch orders, or you could 
I'm getting way off the topic now. Okay. All right. So guys. Um, okay. So task main. So now we're going to go to. So we have it all written. We're ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead. Robot compile and download. Okay. It downloads just fine. Let's say, for example, what might I see when I compiled and download? Let me do an error for you just a second. Let's say that I, I misspelled start motor. I put st start motor. Okay, so if I went to robot compile and download, it would give me an error. So essentially what compiling gets you is it gets you to find all the errors before they're on the robot. So essentially, notice that my error comes up. It shows up here on the top. And then we have this errors, uh, this error um, uh, window. You want to go to the top one in the list or the one, maybe not the top one, but the one with the lowest line number to fix that one first because it might cascade on you. Okay, so basically go to the lowest line number first. Oh, look, it says start motor. Well, if I change it up here, oop, there it goes. Now I'm going to go ahead and compile and download the program. And I can go ahead and click start. Oh, and there it goes. Yay, it's working. Excellent. Okay, so uh, so guys, give it your best shot, um, and uh, go ahead. You can save. Uh, you can save your um, test bed quick exercise off, and that you'll be turning that into the online course. Okay. Uh, good luck.